And now it's time for a Q&A from you, the viewers, and I wanted to expand upon my opinions on the Google Pixel Slate from my recent review. I got a couple of people who wrote in, like Matthew here, uh, who thought I wasn't being fair to the product because it was so new and kind of a beta sort of thing, uh, and I wanted to address that. I'm not picking on Matthew directly, but I thought his comment uh, was the most succinct in this manner. Uh, he said basically here that I bought a concept machine which Google uses internally, and they made it available for a higher price to customers that really wanted it. And I would disagree with that statement. Uh, because if we look back at the history of Google's experimental products, they typically release them in a very limited fashion in that they limit how many people can buy them. They have an invite-only kind of thing where you have to apply to purchase it. Amazon does that with some of their Echo devices that they're releasing in limited quantities. They uh, basically send out invitations to purchase as opposed to just selling it outright. But this product is being marketed to consumers, and here is how they're doing it. When you log into the Google Store, uh, front and center is, guess what, the Pixel Slate and its pen right next to the Google Home and the Google Pixel Phone, two products that I think are much more mature. And you can even find it down here with the rest of the lineup. Uh, they also have on the page for the Google Pixel Slate, they're recommending people buy it for the multitaskers in their life. So this is not something that is just an afterthought or an experimental product. This is something being actively marketed to consumers who are no doubt in the market for something like this, like an iPad or a Surface device. In fact, they're even touting its productivity features about taking your work offline, multitask and collaborate, a powerful desktop experience, and a long-lasting battery with fast recharge, all the things that we see marketed on a Surface tablet or on an iPad. And uh, when I use the iPad Pro, for example, the new one, I love it. Uh, it feels like the future. This doesn't quite feel like the future to me yet. I think it needs a lot of uh, real optimization, not only on the software side, but the hardware. Uh, you saw how that keyboard attached when it was folded up. It was sliding around a lot. And when you flex the keyboard, you'd often get a mouse click inadvertently, one you did not intend to do given how thin it was. Uh, so there were some problems with the accessory items there. The software isn't there, especially to make use of the pen. So that's an issue in of itself. And then Chrome OS on this device just felt bloated to me. Uh, the browser side was fine. It's running great even on low-end ARM devices. But even the Android stuff should have been running better. I didn't get an experience that uh, made me think, wow, this is so much better than a $250 Chromebook. It felt about the same. The Android apps had the same quirkiness as far as their uh, resizing of Windows, for example. The screen redraw was very slow on those things when you did make an adjustment. Uh, they didn't run all that quickly given what you have for a processor inside. It just doesn't feel like it's part of the operating system like the browser is. Uh, so hopefully they can make some uh, gains there to maybe improve the experience on their higher end devices, especially for the Android component. In short, it just doesn't work all that great. And I think they're also having a hard time figuring out how does Chrome OS, which was designed to be a desktop operating system, work as a tablet operating system. And one of the things that I pointed out in the video was that one thing Microsoft did was rather than try to force people into, into that, like they did with Windows 8, uh, they give people the choice. You can either have it run as tablet mode when your keyboard is detached, or you can let it run like a desktop if that's your choice. They just kind of gave up on trying to force it down the user's throat. Uh, and one user said, well, you know what? You can get around that by just attaching a Bluetooth mouse or an accessory. But I don't think you should have to have a hardware device uh, dangling off of it or connected to it just to make the choice as to how you want to interact with your machine. Uh, what I found with my Surface Go, the more I use it, is that sometimes I like it to be in tablet mode and I'll just tap a button and activate it. Other times I don't want it to be in tablet mode and will tap the button again to deactivate it. That's all I want. That's what they should do. If they really have a hard time making the right design decisions, let the users kind of guide that and they can collect that aggregate usage information and find ways to optimize the operating system for that experience. Now, what I mentioned in the review is that Apple took a very different approach to this. So if you want a tablet, you buy an iPad and have all the limitations of the tablet interface. If you want a desktop computer, you buy a Mac. And they offer a Mac that's about the size and weight of an iPad, this little 12-inch uh, MacBook that I use all the time. It's a very uh, nice little computer. It weighs about the same as what an iPad with a keyboard weighs, but you've got a regular computer, and that is how they determined uh, the best way to move forward with their different product lines. I do think we'll see uh, the iPad chip, or a derivative of it, in a Mac soon, but I don't think they're ever going to have a computer that's both. 
Uh, Microsoft, again, tried to do that with Windows 8, force users into the tablet interface even on a desktop computer. That didn't work, so they uh, smartly did Windows 10 to give users that choice. And that's what I think uh, Google needs to do with Chrome OS, is just make it work better in this tablet mode and let users determine uh, what course they should take. Uh, now, related to this, uh, Burajira wanted to know if I'm going to keep my Surface Slate or get rid of it, and I've decided that I am going to return it. Uh, my plan was to actually use that as my uh, Google Chrome device that I have as part of what I call my fleet of devices that I keep here for different reviews that I do, because we often look at things that Chrome OS is doing, most recently that move to install Linux applications. And I was hoping you know, to have a nice Chrome OS device to use for that, but that one just isn't going to cut it. Uh, normally, I'd resell these things to viewers, but I really don't think any of you are going to be all that happy with it either. And the funny thing is, I keep coming back to my Chromebook Flip C101, uh, which I'll show you right here. Uh, this thing has been really useful as a Chrome OS demonstration device because it's got two USB-C ports on it. Uh, so I can easily output the display through those. It's very thin and light. It runs the Linux stuff. It runs the Android stuff. And it also, of course, runs regular Chrome stuff. So if I want to see how something might work in a tablet environment, I can just flip it around and get it going that way. So it's still a very nice, useful device. Um, Samsung has some really nice Chromebooks that I, I reviewed one of them a while back. I'll put a link to it down below in the master playlist. I really liked that one. It was very nicely performing, uh, wasn't all that expensive, had the pen built in, and I think works better really as a two-in-one in Chrome versus just a straight-out tablet in Chrome. Uh, so you may want to look at one of those, or if you want something tiny, something like this, because this is really useful and performs, as we saw in the video, pretty much as well as that Six hundred dollar uh, slate tablet does in benchmark tests. So that's where I, you know, it's my thought on this. I think it's something that it's, you know, everyone's going to find different things to uh, talk about and like and dislike. But I think on the whole, for consumers, this is not a consumer-ready device. I think Chrome OS enthusiasts will find some way to make the best use of it, but it's not perfect even for them. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta. The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.